Hi there, so how about learning a really exciting skill for jazz, but let's not stop there. Let's put it to good use by creating a great groove around it and also a few real nice and tasty fills, even a very difficult one to push the boundaries of your playing. And just before we start, please stick around to the end of this video because I'll put all the play alongs there for you as well to practice with. Now the groove that we are using here is a modal static chord type rhythmic figure that is very useful in that playing style. Okay, so you'll see the uh, sheet music appear just now. And so let's analyze this groove with the uh, help of the sheet music here. Okay, so it's a two bar rhythmic figure. The first bar contains a dotted quarter note, an eighth note, a rest on the three, and a quarter note on the four. And the sound of that is this, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay, one more time. Three, four, one, two, and three, four. That's it. And now uh, going into the second bar, we have a half note and two quarter notes. And that is the end of our groove. Basically, like I said, this is a two bar groove here. So the second bar will be a one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Right, that's very clean and very um, easy so far. So what we do to put together these two bars, we are actually tying the last quarter note in the first bar to the first half note in the second bar, and that will give us that real great rhythmic figure. Okay, so let me just count that out for you and play it for you. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. A quick reminder before we move on, subscribe to ZoltansBassLounge.com and access many free lessons and courses with great resources, sheet music and play-alongs, a dedicated double bass section and electric bass section, and personal contact with me through private lessons and the Bass Booster program. So go ahead and subscribe today. Excellent, that is the uh, rhythmic aspect of this groove. But of course there is a melodic and harmonic element to it as well. So basically we are playing over a C minor 7 chord, and the C minor 7 chord fits our scale, the uh, C Dorian scale. So now I have just revealed it to you, we'll be talking about the uh, C Dorian scale in a minute. Okay, so the notes I chose were according to the C minor 7 chord. So I have chosen the C, of course, which is the root note, and eventually I went to the G, which is the fifth of this chord, and also the B flat, which is the uh, seventh of this chord. And of course, they are fitting with the uh, C Dorian scale as well. As you can see, it's a real nice, very basic, but very, very cool groove. And so let's take a look and let's have a listen to what it sounds like with the um, drums and piano added as well. And just to remind you, you can practice this groove with the same play along later on at the end of the video. Now let's just see that scale, and as I've already mentioned, we are learning the uh, C Dorian scale, okay? Now the uh, Dorian scale or the Dorian mode itself is the second mode of the major scale or the major sound. And so there is a real easy way to determine what scale, what major tonality you're coming from here. All you have to do is take the root note of your Dorian scale, in our case it's a C, and we'll just step down a whole step from that C in our case, that will be a B flat, and that is the uh, tonality, that is the um, root tonality that we are coming from to this C Dorian scale. All we are doing, we are still actually playing B flat major, essentially, all we are doing is that we are playing this B flat major scale from its second note from the C all the way up to another C. So that is a quick summary of the scale, and now let's play it, let's find out what the notes are, and if there are any technical difficulties that we'll bump into along the way. Okay, so it starts with a C, of course. And from that C, we'll go to a D, to an E flat, 
to an F, to a G, to an A, to a B flat, and then finish with a C. Now descending, of course we'll start with a C again, back to this B flat here, to the A, to the G, to the F, to the E flat, to the D, and the C with your fourth finger. So when you come across a new scale and you learn it, a great first step is to just play it up and down, play it up and down, the way I just did it here, really slowly without any kind of play along or any kind of help of anything, because you'll get used to the sound of that scale. And you'll also see if there is any uh, technical difficulty that, that you have to actually work on and, and get through. In this case, actually, the only thing I could see in the scale is this A here, basically the shift from this A on your second finger to your B flat, to your first finger. That's the only thing here from this A to this B flat. And then actually the reverse of that when we come to this C here, I have done something you probably have noticed. I have um, made a one-time finger pattern adjustment there. So I took this C here on my fourth finger and I basically just slid back with my fourth finger or shifted back with my fourth finger to this B flat here. Reason being is now that I'm on that B flat, I have the full scale, the full rest of the scale in front of me without having to do any further shifts or anything else. So, so basically that one time little finger pattern adjustment now gave me a very logical and very easy pattern for the rest of the scale like that. So let's go to that C again. One time finger pattern adjustment four to four and then you have the scale, the rest of the scale in front of you, like that, okay? And that is the scale, practice it. And now we're gonna go and, and find out what this scale sounds like with, uh, with its accompanying C minor seven chord. Okay, so let's go and take a look. Okay, now we are making really good progress here and we've got the scale, we've got the groove. Now it's time to put the two together and create a real exciting way to practice this scale, okay? And the way I did it here is that I've played the groove and every fourth bar of the groove I have replaced with the scale. First time around I would ascend with the scale and second time around I would come back and descend with the scale. Now let me show you what I, what I mean here, okay? So if you're starting with the groove, so let's say three, four, second bar, third bar, now scale, groove again, fourth bar scale descending, okay, and so on it goes. So we've got this real nice feel of the scale actually becoming a fill itself. Now let's go and see what it sounds like with the piano and bass added to the mix. Originally, I was going to put four fills here, but then I realized there's more than enough to learn here with the scale, with the groove, and the two of them together. So I'm gonna put the fills in a separate video for you. And now, before we put the play-alongs on, let me give you some real useful tips and advice on how to actually get on with them. So the first thing I would do, I would practice the groove itself. It's only three notes. It's only that C, that G, and that B flat. 
And what you really need to concentrate on here is the uh, rhythmic aspect of the groove. So make sure that you're okay with that. And once you feel comfortable, then put on the groove play along and just play and play and play. Put it on again when it runs out and play it and play it. Basically, the way to really internalize a groove and play a groove really well so you'll have a great feel and sense of tempo is to play it over and over again. Once you've done that, then go to the scale, make sure that you've got that A to B flat shift covered. Also the um, one time finger pattern adjustment between the C and the, and the B flat there, okay. And then put the, um, that chord play along on, you know, the C minor seven chord and play the scale to the chord. And you will notice that every note has a, has a separate little individual character to it when you place it over the chord. And that is very, very good to listen to, you know, listen to every note you play over the chord, listen to their character, listen to what they sound like, you know, that is very, very good ear training as well. And so once you've done that, then go back to the groove play along and then you can do the whole thing. You can do the uh, three bars of the groove with the scale at the end in the fourth bar. And then you can just practice the scale going up and practice it again. And then you could just practice the scale descending you know, three bars of the groove, scale descending, and again and again, and eventually three bars of the groove, scale ascending, three bars of the groove, scale descending. Okay, and by the time you've done all of that and you've really practiced and you know, you've got into the um, different play alongs and you play the scale, play the groove, you know, then you'll really be honing in your playing, your groove playing and also your melodic playing by playing the scale over the groove itself and also over the chord. So that is some really, really good work that you'll be doing there, okay? So all I'd like to say now is enjoy working on this material, enjoy working with the play alongs and I'm sure that it will help your overall playing. Great, thanks a lot for your time.